Yeah, my name is uh, Roger Arke. I'm um, a furniture and product designer based in Hackney. I was born and raised in Barcelona, uh, where I studied my BA. And after that, uh, I moved for, for a few years in New York to, to work in Nissan studio. And after that, I came to London to, to study the RCA. And then I stayed uh, in here for the last 10 years, I believe. This uh, a painting a friend of mine did uh, many years ago, which was a trigger, a starting point for, for, for my, my projects. Um, it, it, you can see there's some variations of, uh, of a circle and it's about exploring as many of these as possible based on one shape, which later on when I was at the RCA, um, that, that happened on my first year, at the end of my first year. It's a collection of bird houses which are based, of course, on the shape and trying to, to get as many variations as possible. After that, I um, made also um, a collection of uh, mouse traps. They are non-lethal mouse traps, so it's just to trap the mouse, the mice, not to kill them. Yeah, yeah I got a few, well, few, few pieces of them. You can watch them on, on my website if you want. And to finish this sort of trilogy about animals and variations, I made a whole collection of fish bowls, full scale in real glass, and that's an example of one of them. Uh, this one, it sort of talks about two different fish living in the same place, but still separate. The small can go into the big place, and the big fish can go into the small one. And this is after RCA, I set up my own design practice uh, seven years ago. And that's the three pillars of the DNA of the studio. It's basically function, has to be an object that brings you from A to B, uh, has, to, has a function, proper function. Beauty, which has to be pleasant to your eyes and then emotion, which is probably the most important. It, it moves you inside, it tickles your soul. And why talk about uh, emotionalism? I would like to think that in the future, design thinking, it's going to be called emotionalism. And I would like to believe that uh, I would be part of it somehow. Some examples of this, uh, it's, uh, for example, this, this light I designed a few years ago. It's, uh, it's a glass piece with some water inside. It's all concealed. And the glass has been pushed in, and there's a light bulb that rests so the heat of the light bulb creates condensation inside, so it makes its own lampshade. And it, it makes this emotional um, factor that I always look on every project. This is a stool being produced by a company called Zilio. It's one metal rod uh, that sort of clamps the legs together. And the whole point here, the, the functional bit, is that, is that it, it, it makes the whole structure of the stool. And the emotional bit is that uh, the user can, can put their legs the way they want, so it's a bit more relaxed the way it's been used. As you can see, the, the rod has been sort of uh, put inside into a routed side uh, on the leg, and it's just one screw that holds the structure with one of the legs. The next project, it's a family of funnels for the kitchen by an amazing company called Royal VKB. And proud to say that I got a red award with this project. And they are sort of multi-usable uh, funnels for the kitchen, made in plastic. And you can use it in, in different ways. It's just a bit like breaking, breaking out the, the sense of what is the funnel. So you can use it in, in different uh, performances. For example, the one on, the, on your left, it could be used for a pitcher for water, or it could be used, I use them for, to beat eggs, or you can do sangria, etc. So you can sort of improvise what you want to do with them in the kitchen while, while you cook or, or serve food for friends. The next one, which is actually in the back on the cafe, you can see it there and, and use it. It's a ceramic lamp slash flower vase. The interaction between switching on and off, it's touching the flowers. So the flowers uh, work as a switch, as a touch sensitive for the light to go on and off. And these are you know, some photos of, of how we make how we work in the studio. It's a lot of hands-on. We prototype and we make models and we on and on until you know, we, we are happy with the shapes. It's a lot of uh, checking dimensions and proportions and sizes and we have to touch it, bite it, smell it. Otherwise, it's not, it's not, it's not real. And this is a, a prototype, I, a, well, a project I did for my daughter as a present when she was one year old. I made this stool and chair that uh, I sort of have ready made. I used uh, cooking spoons for the spindles and I use rolling pins for the legs and a pasty brush for the little stool that you see on the right. And I wanted to again like bring this emotional bit into everyday furniture. The next one, it's my website, which I took it also as a project. And it's quite important for my work as well. You can see lots of the making of how do we make the projects that we do. It's not just a sketch or doing some bits on computer, it's a lot of hands-on. And, and I would like to really thank this in because they've been really, really supportive since I started my design practice. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, thank you uh, to everyone for listening.